Uh, welcome to another one. Today we're gonna see how I texted a girl from almost non-responsive, from basically ghosting me, to making her double text me. And we'll see how I did this and, and how you can do this as well. And so follow along, I'm gonna basically explain the entire texting sequence. Follow along, uh, if you're interested in learning more, you can also grab the link from the description below and go to the community where you'll get all the tools that you need to ace your dating life and start getting quality women attracted to you. And with that said, and without further ado, let's get into it and let's see how I was persistent without being needy. I was texting her exactly when the timing was right and I was making sure to maintain exactly what I wanted and not give in to the temptation to meet her when she wanted to meet me and how in the way that she wanted to meet me and why this will get me eventually to get double texted by a girl. So strap in, let's go. The thing with texting is that it's kind of like a boxing match. So that means that when you ask her out over text, it has to be a knockout punch. Because if you keep asking her out, the power of asking her out will be diluted. Okay, and we don't want that. We want when you ask her out, the asking her out to have like a lot of gravity. Make sense? So that she takes it seriously, she yeah. respects it, and uh, and then she says yes, and she comes out and meets meets you because that's the whole point of texting. The point of texting is not to be a pen pal, but to actually get the girl out and meet you in real life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the way that we want to do this is you want to to set yourself up to deliver that power punch. So you can only ask her out when you know that she's gonna say yes. And you know that because you've built some investment. And you know the investment because of some factors. A factor could be that she texts you more than you text her. Or that she starts asking you about yourself. Things like that, okay. If you're uh, texting a girl and you're the, always the one texting first and um, and you're like, you know, you're chasing after her. If you ask her out, she's not gonna say yes. But if, if she starts texting you first and she starts double texting you and she starts asking you about yourself, that's when you can finally ask her out. Especially if you guys feel like you're on the same vibe um, and and it feels like, you know, you're, you're kind of like on the same wavelength and especially like at times where you're texting in, in real time, like not one text and like three hours later the answer comes, but rather, uh, you know, texting back and forth like right now, like live. Okay. So, I'm going to pull up my conversation with this girl and... Um, I'm going to go through it and maybe that will make a little bit more sense. So let's go to the beginning. The beginning is right here. <laughs> this is the girl. And oh, in fact, um, fair enough. Boom. And recording. So, okay, this is the girl that I've been chatting with. And this is how the messages started. So... <laughs> Okay, so, good, so, okay, this is where I met her, uh, by the way, when we met with this girl, we had met once, I met her on the street, I approached her on the street, and um, we exchanged numbers, and then I texted her three days later, but I got no response. And then I let it go, and then I see her a second time on the street, like about a month later after that. And I approach her again, and I'm like, oh, you're this Russian girl that I, um, you know, that I met, that we met this other day, and then uh, we never chatted. She's like, yeah, yeah, I remember, blah, blah. She's like, I changed my number. I'm like, okay, cool. So let's, let's exchange numbers again, and, uh, and just hang out sometime. And we could have hung out the right then and there, by the way, but whatever, we didn't. So... 
This is where I text her first. I'm like, found you, and uh, this is like where I met her. And the second day I met her on the street, um, I said that we should hang out uh, tomorrow, I think, yeah, tomorrow night. So I text her the next day in the AM, and I'm like, uh, if you want to hang out tonight, like we said that we would, although it wasn't confirmed, I have a cool spot in mind, I'll be free around night, how's your day? She doesn't text me back until the next morning. So, later, the, the same night, actually, she, she texts me, I text her in the morning, she texts me late, late, late at night. And she's like, sorry to answer that late, I had plans today, one event, and then I text her two days later. I'm like, how was your event? Um, so, you see the pattern here, that's kind of important, yeah? Because, uh, this is obviously kind of relevant. If So, like I've said to you before, the metadata is more important than the content. So the metadata is when you text her, for instance. That's something that's the context and not the content. So if I texted her the very sa the exact same thing, but I texted her like five minutes later, it would have been a completely different fucking vibe. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you see how that's completely different? Now I made her like, I made her wait for two days before I, I, I answered her. So, that's lesson number one. Then, she answers me a minute later. What's your question? Why did you make her, well, why did you make her wait two days? Because it's only fair, because here's what's happening in the, in the power dynamic. I meet her on the street for the second time after she ignored my text the first time and I tell her we should hang out tomorrow night, tomorrow evening. So I text her the next morning to hang out tomorrow evening. We hadn't made solid plans but we kind of like talked about it. And she doesn't tell me she can't or anything like that, she only texts me a lot later after the fact and she's, she, she tells me sorry I had plans, okay. So. At that point, the power dynamic is me chasing her. I've chased her a lot at that point. So now I'm taking it back. And I want to hope that the way that I've been towards her in the live interaction and all of my texts until then have at least built enough value that it makes sense for me to, if I pull back, for her to chase. In fact, if I don't pull back, I don't give her the opportunity to chase at all. And girls need to chase you to be attracted. It's one of the fucking commandments. Okay. Does this compute? Does this make sense? Yeah. Alright, so two days after that, I text her and one minute later she sends me a voice note and she's like, the voice note was like, oh, I just did, this is how my day is going, how about you? This is like super chill shit, right? And here's the next lesson. The next lesson is like, she's like, um, what have you been doing these last days? And I answer, making money. That's my whole answer. Mm -hmm. So the lesson here is that I'm not trying, and I answer like a half an hour later too, like on my own, at my own time, on my own, on my own time. And this is where we left off last time, right? Until here, you kind of like know what's happened. You've already seen this. And notice that here, I'm not trying to ask her a question to, so that she texts me back again. I'm just telling her like a, just dr like a dry answer. Um, and you know, that's it basically. Um, and by the way, I know that this girl values making money as well. Um, so it kind of makes sense that it speaks to her values as well. And I'm demonstrating that I am not interested in getting girls or anything like that. I'm interested in myself and I'm, I'm being true to myself. Like that's what, where my focus is. And what happens is that she liked the message. Okay, she sent me a heart and that was her answer. And I left it at that on that day. So that was July 15th. And then I tell you, 
This doesn't look very impressive, but underneath the surface, what we're doing here has a lot of value because what we're doing here is setting ourselves up to deliver that power punch. Get it? Yes. So we're not trying to, to keep jabbing here, to keep trying to get her out or keep trying to, to make her like us or keep trying to get to know her or anything like that. The game is played in the metadata. The game is played in the... I text her back something that doesn't require a reply. So I'm not trying to help her to reply to me. I'm like, if you don't want to reply to me, I'm going to be good either way. That's my frame. So, and I'm texting her at my own time, on my own time, whenever I want. If I want to text her two days later, that's what I do. Okay. And there's like a, kind of like a delicate balance before you let her wait for too long. And we'll see that as well. But generally, it's good to make girls wait. And the best time to do that is when they ask you a question. When they're trying to prompt you to answer or to, like, to, to require something from you, that's when you make them wait. Okay. Now, so what happens after that? She's, uh, she's like the message. And then <laughs> that was when I was talking with you on the fucking, on the fucking coaching. And instead of calling you... Yeah. I, 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 unfortunately, I called her uh, on my camera, like on the, on the video call. And I hung up immediately, but obviously she's seen the call and she's like, you called me? And she's, she asked me a question like an hour and a half later or an hour later. She texts me to ask if I was trying to call her. That happened July 16th, okay, in the afternoon. A day later in the afternoon, I answer again. Okay, and like, hey, yes, I did, but it was by accident. How are you? That's it. I'm not trying to like, I don't know, to, to, to elicit any fucking responses. I'm just trying, I'm just saying hello. Like, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to get her to answer me. I'm not trying to, to tell her cool shit. I'm not trying to make her like me, and I'm not trying to ask her out. Is anything clicking? Yes, I think I'm starting to grasp what you mean. Okay, so I'm asking, how are you? She texts me a picture of her gym. She's uh, she's on the treadmill. Good. Jim, and you? Uh, and I'm like, this is what's actually fucking sexy to me. Because like, this is like the picture of the grind, you feel me? So that's like, that's what I appreciate. And she's like, what? I'm like, love seeing the grind when people put in the work. And she's like, oh, so crazy. Um, and then I answer her message. Now that's another lesson. And that's a good lesson for live interactions as well. If a girl asks you something, you don't need to abandon your train of thought and hop on hers. If you're mid-sentence and the girl interrupts you to ask you something, or even on text, just continue with your own train of thought. Just keep going. And when you're good and ready, then you will return to her question and then answer it. If you interrupt your own train of thought to jump on her question, that makes it obvious that you feel that your shit doesn't have value compared to her shit. That's why you want to jump on her shit. But if you remain on yours, you demonstrate, you broadcast that your own train of thought, that your own character has value to you and probably to other people. And that's what makes it interesting for her. Okay, so I answer her. Here I'm like having an awesome date, keeping it steady. Again, I'm not trying to ask her more questions or what, see what she's doing. And slowly but surely, she's just trying to, she's starting to open up. She's like, uh, you know, basically sharing her shit. Okay. She's like, I'm sweaty. Okay. Trying to be sexy or whatever. Better don't see me like this. Sweaty needs weak. <laughs> yes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? Now, this is the first time that we see investment on her side. Okay. And I sent her a picture of my laptop I was editing, so that's what I sent her. And I said, got a lot on my plates today. What is this? I see the Mac, but I don't understand what's on the screen. Um, I'm editing a video for a brand I'm launching. Tomorrow I'll be free. Evening. So this is me saying, because now this whole time we said that we're going to go out, we didn't. So I want to see what happens again. Okay, so I'm like, tomorrow I'll be free in the evening. And now she's playing hard to get again. She's like, I don't know what I'll do tomorrow. Show photo. Okay, whatever. She sends me another picture of her gym. Um, 
not very interesting. So, let's do something together tomorrow evening. Like, yeah, let's do something together. Like what? Now, this is a mistake. This is a terrible idea. Uh, so, what she's trying to do here, she's trying to... Is she's trying to get me to qualify myself. She's trying to get me to say, like, uh, like, go on a date, have a drink, and come on, it's going to be amazing, and it's going to be so much fun, blah, blah. This is... The this is like this is a terrible idea because you're qualifying yourself to the girl and now she can take it or leave it and she's probably going to reject it because honestly bro like no idea sounds amazing like she's like done it all seen it all like she's gonna just go on a date with some dude again now the right answer here is tell me if you're down to hang out and I'll tell you what we're doing so one thing at a time so that's a sign of dominance. Exactly, taking back the fucking yeah. power. Okay, um, you 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 can't go down her her road like you can't go down her own path of conversation. You gotta stay true to your path. So first, she gotta commit, and if she can commit, then I'll tell her what we'll do. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So, and she's like, okay, I know what you want. It's not difficult to guess. Now she's throwing a test at me, yeah? Um, I hope I can find the sequence again. And she's like, she, uh, it's not difficult to guess, yawning emojis. Um, so, a really, a really bad way to react to that is, uh, no, you don't know what I want, bitch, or some shit like that, or, or trying to like deny that what you want is what you want. Um, I just play it cool and I say, cool, I also know what I want. <laughs> so, That's a cool answer, <laughs> I'm not giving into anything, I'm not admitting anything, she's assuming things about me and I'm not even accusing her of that, I'm just completely nonchalant about it. She's like, okay, surprise me. And then I'm like, I might, okay. And now the, we get lost in translation a little bit and she's like, what do you mean? And I'm, I say, you said surprise me, okay, I might surprise you, anyway. And this is where I made a little bit of a mistake because she started typing here and then I typed anyway, do you want to hang out tomorrow? But I should have left it. When a girl is typing, you let her type, you let her text first. Okay, major mistake. This is the point where we were texting like live at the same time, back and forth. Um, so I said anyway, yes anyway, and with all this bullshit, as you can see, me asking her to come out with me got diluted again because now we're lost. Now there is no expectation for her to answer to going out with me anymore. Now this got erased and that's where I should have held the tension and unfortunately I didn't do that because I was a little too quick with my thumbs. And, uh, and I'm asking, do you want to hang out tomorrow? And that is a little too much. Okay, so she's deflecting, you're crazy, you look like you're crazy. Um, she also said that like when we were hanging out, I was looking her in the eye very, you know, um, in a very present way and she was like, oh, don't look at me like that, you know, she got a little um, shy. So, now I'll say, oh, should I, should I make other plans? I think it would be nice to do something. Um, and I answered this, you're a little shy. So, this is, there's two two parallel threads of conversation here. Uh, the I look at her like I'm crazy and she's shy and the hanging out tomorrow or not hanging out tomorrow. This is a bad idea of when you're making plans. So when you're making plans, again, you don't want to dilute this knockout punch. You want to be very like specific on making like plans and, and not having two conversations at the same time. So all of this is bad texting here. Okay, and you see that in this Part, we're not going out. So, good. She's like, I'm not shy. Maybe at the first look I'm shy, but I understand myself. Whatever. Now, next. I have a question. Hit me. What's your question? You ask her, do you want to hang out tomorrow? And she doesn't reply to that. Exactly. So, uh, you're asking her again, should I make other plans? I think it would be nice to do something. Is that pushy or not? That's barely pushy, like that's that's as much as I would push. Okay. Like that's the limit of me pushing, I would not push more than that. Because if you are 
If you insist more than that, then it goes from power into force. Power is the knockout punch, right? Yeah. Force is not going to have an effect. Okay. So, um, okay, so yeah, it's like the threat of her being shy or not shy, whatever. And next, tell me. And then she doesn't answer. She says, I understand myself. And then she says, tell me. Um, and then she doesn't answer anymore. Because I also, I think I answered, I said that a little later. That was like 4.50 and then I texted her. I answered that at 6. So, the next day or the, a couple of days after, maybe a few days after, I think. Um, I thought about this and I thought about this. Here's what's happening with this girl. This girl has some primary do that she's either seeing or likes but it's kind of like maybe he doesn't want her or something like, like I am definitely number two right now for her I'm not number one so she's trying to keep me in the back burner uh, however that's a good position to be if you can I don't have first of all I don't have an influence in what happens with her uh, her and her other dude uh, but I do have an influence in how I am perceived while I'm being in the back burner. And if I have like 10 girls that have me in the back burner, like one of them is going to probably want to see me every day. Does that make sense? So if you're in the back burner, you're either going to be used for attention or you're going to be next in line when the thing with the primary dude doesn't work out. And then you will become the primary dude. Yeah. Okay. So it, it kind of depends on you, how you play it, and how you um, interact with her on text during that time to figure out, to see how she's going to perceive you. Are, are you going to be like very needy and are you going to be used only for attention? Or are you going to text her kind of like this, where you keep your power and when it's time to, to, like, to strike then you can deliver that knockout punch and actually meet her outside um, in person, in real life. So, I thought about all these things and I also thought about the fact that she said that she knows what I want. And she kind of, she assumes that I only want to fuck her. And what that really means is that she wants to meet a guy that cares about her. So, I text her on my own, so this is me double texting here. Um, I cannot care about you if I don't know you. Let's take a walk together. So I'm kind of I'm saying that I'm I'm willing to meet her halfway. I understand that she wants a guy to care about her, and me saying that with, without a reference, being in her head in that way is very beneficial. It means that I communicate with her in a, at a level where most guys don't, and that's one of the things that makes me the guy that's next in line as opposed to the guy that's going to be used for attention. Because I understand. Like, it's not the fact that I want to care about her, but it's the fact that I know what's in her mind that's beneficial and significant okay. here. So, she texts me back, hey, what do you mean? I mean, I'd like to get to know you. What are you doing? And th the moment I said it, she's like, what are you doing now? So, in that, in that minute... Uh, that's like an hour, about like 45 minutes later. In that minute, I could probably say nothing, let's fucking hang out. That's all, like the knockout punch is almost there. But I'm keeping my powder dry here, okay? I'm making sure that... I feel like, I, I feel like most dudes, especially guys like me, would go for it. 100% there. Exactly, that's the mistake. Like, a lot of guys would take that opportunity. And, and here, she's unfortunately, she's still only half-baked. We're not ready yet. Like, I want to know that if I deliver that knockout punch, if I ask her out, it's going to be a, like a done deal. She really wants to see me. Okay. Because, again, I've how, already... How do you know that? We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Don't worry. Um, okay. Again, I've already asked her out a couple of times, so my messaging is already starting to be diluted because every time you ask her out and she ignores it or deflects is another time that your messaging loses value. Okay, so what are you doing right now? I'm working. And I answer maybe like a half an hour later. 
or maybe 45 minutes later. I am, uh, I'm not giving her the opportunity. But she's like, okay. And then I say, I'm free tomorrow afternoon evening. Do you have plans? And she says, I'm free tomorrow afternoon evening. Do you have plans? Tomorrow is good in Bali where it's like a bar here in Greece. Um, and, uh, and then I don't answer that. Now she's trying to get me to go out to meet her outside where she's going to be with her friends. And I think that's a bad idea. I want to meet her at a one-on-one -on -one setting. I'm not going to try to go to the club to chase after her. That's definitely not the vibe. Um, and then I text her again on my, I don't answer that at all. And I text her again on Monday and I leave her a super short voice note. Hey, what's up? Uh, how's your day? How are you? What are your plans? Uh, what are you doing this week? And stuff like that. Uh, normal. What about wait, you? Wait, wait, wait. I'm lost. Yes. When did those pop messages happen? No, no, no. You texted her on Monday, but the last two messages, when was that? Last two messages were on Saturday. So that's a good so point. You... That's a very good point. So we're texting Saturday. Boom, boom, boom. She tells me Sunday is going to be good at this bar. And then uh, I don't text her for two days. I don't text her the whole Sunday. And I text her again Monday afternoon, Monday at noon. So did, did you just her hours is that what it is no no I, I yeah I didn't answer that but I didn't I didn't I also didn't say that I was gonna go to the bar to meet her so I just didn't answer so she why here's because good question so the reason why I didn't answer is because at that point she's trying to she knows that I want to meet her one-on-one -on -one and she's trying to get me to compromise. She's trying to get me to meet her in a way that is not what I want. Okay. So if I agree to that, I'm going to lose value. So is there a possibility that she could have taken that as you trying to make plans but not taking it seriously or something? Um, possibly. Possibly. Could you have lost the whole meeting from there or is that something that I'm thinking about wrong? Well, you see, this girl likes me for sure. Because every time we text, know. every time we... Um, because she keeps texting me back, she keeps, like, the times that she's texting me. I tend to text her whenever I want, and slowly but surely, she tends to answer exactly when I text her. Okay. And she's asking me questions about myself, and every time... And, by the way, I also know that because I know the impact that my behavior, my texting behavior has. So even if there is no evidence from her, I know that if I refuse to meet her in a way that is not exactly what I want, and the refusal manifests as me leaving her on red, this will make me more scarce. This will make me more coveted. This will make me more attractive in her eyes. If she's wired normally as a girl, this will make me more attractive. And this is the reality too. I refuse. This is what's the, the real actual thing that's happening in my head is that I refuse to meet her in a, in a way that I don't want to meet her with other people in, in a bar setting, in a club setting. Um, because I want to meet her exactly how I want to meet her. I want to meet her one-on-one -on -one in a chill, quiet setting so we can chat and get to know each other. And if she's trying to waste my time asking me random shit if I can meet her in a way that I don't want. I'm not even going to give that question um, oxygen. I'm not even going, I'm just completely going to ignore it. And this is how I operate as a, as a dude. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you reply to her text about telling you tomorrow is good in Bolivar and you ended up meeting, what was going to be the difference? The difference is that if I go there, 
she's going to be in a condition where she's partying with her friends and I'm kind of the outsider that has to win everybody over. And ah. I also, the frame is, I kind of went there for her. So it's like her environment. So okay. right off the bat, I'm coming in at a disadvantage. So okay, okay. now, if I happen to be in a club because I wanted to go to the club and I meet a girl with her friends and I win everybody over and I, I take the girl's number or I pull the girl home, that's a different deal. That's a completely different situation. But if I go to this bar chasing after the girl, that is like, this is not the vibe. Okay. Okay, okay. So, I ignore the question. Two days later, I text her. I text her this voice note, and she's like, "Yeah, normal. What are your plans for this week?" Greek German guy, and I ignore that text as well. But <laughs> again, so so now she's like, she's kind of invested. We've been chatting with each other for quite a while because I met her about ten days ago now, right? Um, and yes, ten days ago is kind of a long time to chat with a girl. Absolutely granted, but. This is a girl where there's no way in the situation that she is with the personality that she has to get her out to meet you in two days. It's just like not going to happen. Um, and the time investment that I have in this text is maybe 30 seconds every second day. So I don't care being kept in the back burner in her life because I'm keeping her in the back burner in my life. So I invest minimal time to keep a bunch of girls in the back burner and every now and then one of them is available. One of them, like the situation with her guy kind of like falls apart and she's looking for the other guy, for the next guy and I am next in line. I happen to be the next guy. Um, of course, there's also girls that are available and that will see me tonight. That's a different story. I'm specifically talking about the girls that are currently unavailable. All right. So... I'm out at a rooftop with like dope music and a dope view and I sent her a three second clip of like the, you know, the beat thumping and the view and I'm like, you should come. And she's like, are you alone? You can see that she texts me the very next minute. And, uh, and then by the way, I didn't answer and she double texted me. She said, enjoy a little bit later, like 20 minutes later, 10 minutes later, she texts me again. And she's like, enjoy. And then three minutes after that, I text her back. And I'm like, no, I'm not alone. What are you up to? Thank you. And she's like, I'm home. I just, um, I got back from training. I was cooking pasta. Now I'm a little tired. What are your plans at 10.30 p.m.? And again, I don't answer. And now, today, she double texts me. She's like, hey, how are you? What are your plans for today? Oh, there it is. So this is what this is what happened. So this is how you get the girl from non-responsive to double texting you, basically. Holy shit. Okay. Understand what we've done here. We have maintained a situation where I am, I respond whenever I want. I definitely leave some time between my responses and when she texted me and when I texted back. I text her back at my own time. I refuse to do what she wants me to do. I only want exactly what I want. And I am persistent without being needy. So I'm gonna close the video with this. If you watch the entire video, you're one of the very few that really wants to learn. And uh, I really hope that you took a bunch of cool lessons away from this video because this is really a masterclass. And I'm gonna keep honing in on how to teach texting because that's a beast in and of itself, how to communicate with girls over text. And, um, and with that said, I do have a little bit of an update. I asked that girl out on a walk tomorrow one on one and as predicted she literally just texted me she said i said by the way that's her yeah hold on making sure that i got the receipts 
And I'm like, uh, wanna take a walk with me tomorrow, M maybe tomorrow. And then I also kind of like corrected myself, have a walk with me. I was a little more assertive the second time there. And she's like, tomorrow, yes, we can. So that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. And with that said, uh, make sure to follow the channel to receive more updates and like the video. Um, so subscribe to the channel is the right word. And uh, check out the community, man. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.